Good morning, YouTubers. Um, I've been asked by several people several times to try to finish up on uh, rebuilding the idlers, so we're going to try to uh, attempt to show you how this is being done. In the uh, first video, I showed you uh, the idler after it's been uh, refurbished and the new O-rings on it and uh, we're going to show you how that's done. Unfortunately I can't do that on the lathe simply because I don't have a tripod that's long enough or steady enough to show how it's done um, on the lathe. So bear with me, I'll describe it to you. You should be able to figure this out. You don't have to be an Einstein to figure it out. So on the headstock you're going to have one of these little suckers right here. Nearly every lathe comes with one and it's going to be mounted inside like this and you'll note that nothing touches the rubber whatsoever. On the other side, we're going to have a free rolling cone like this, okay? And this is going to be mounted inside and it will be concentric on the lathe once you get it set up. And you're going to turn this at, at medium speed. And the tools we're going to use to turn this down, my favorite tool is this carbide cutting tool right here has a flat face, this is a skew, and that's not to say that you can't use any other skew that's been sharpened appropriately so that you can get a smooth cut. And you want to gently push it into the uh, rubber and don't push it in too fast or too hard because you're going to rip the rubber right up. We want to do nice clean shavings and we want to turn the outside dimension down to approximately 1.625 inches. And, you know, if you're a little over under, it's not a big deal. Uh, this is not rocket science. The 45 players as a whole are generally never right on target at 45 RPM anyhow. These are designed primarily for kids, teenagers, uh, and the like. They were inexpensive players to listen to your 45s. So the outer dimension, once again, on the larger of the two sections is going to be at 1.625, give or take a fraction. And the inside dimension here on the, or the outside dimension on the smaller concentric area here is going to be 0.625. And uh, once you get it turned down to that point, uh, make sure it's nice and clean. Um, what I do is I use a small grooved tool like this. You can use a nail, you can use anything just to mark the center of the larger and the smaller section. Once I've done that, I'm going to use a carbide parting tool like this. Now this parting tool falls just shy of the width of the o-ring itself. So what I do is I push this straight into the center nice and slow because we want a flat groove. We want the groove to be in uh, approximately um, on the outer side anyhow, the, this larger section, 1.5 to 1.55 inches deep. And again, this is not rocket science. If you're a couple thousand feet away, it's not a big deal. But we have to be as wide as and actually slightly wider than the O-ring itself. Because what happens is the walls on the rubber are so thin to begin with that they'll flex quite a bit if all you have is a round groove as opposed to a flat groove. You see, on, on a metal thing like this, this is brass, you can do a groove because the walls are very thick and they hold the o-ring in place. It's not a big deal. But because the rubber flexes, this rubber wall both inside and outside flexes so much, it's going to tend to give you a wow and flutter. So we want a totally flat bottom. That's why I use the, the uh, parting tool which is nice and flat on the end and run it down to uh, the width or slightly wider than the o-ring itself. And we want to be, like I said, approximately 1.5 to 1.55 inside, I'm sorry, yeah, 1.55, 1.5 to 1.55 grooved on the inside flat groove and 0.53 to 0.54 on the inner groove so that when we put this together it's going to look just like that. And uh, that's it. It's pretty straightforward and simple. After that you're going to take and mount the, uh, the O-rings on. Of course, you're not going to be mounting it on the brass. You're going to be mounting it on the rubber here. But this is, this is pretty much what it's going to look like when you're all said and done. And it does a terrific job. Um, it really does, so long as you are correct in your cutting to begin with. I can't stress enough that the groove must be flat and as wide as or slightly wider 
than the rubber um, o-ring itself. If you do that you should be right on target it doesn't cost a lot of money and it really does sound great. My only regret is that I can't show you how this is done on a lathe simply because I don't have a tripod uh, again to hold this into place but again it's not rocket science. Um, if you're handy with a lathe this is something that you could do very easily. Um, I'm welcome to any questions you might have. Um, all you got to do is direct them to me and uh, we'll try to answer whatever you want. So there it is. Um, a straight and easy way to handle your, your RCA idlers. And I uh, hope it's been of uh, some value to you. Have a great day now.